I am excited to announce my new podcast, Giving Legends. It's an opportunity for me, Hannibal Navies, and my co-host, Charlie Batch, to talk with people of influence who are committed to building a legacy through service. Stay tuned and learn what makes them Giving Legends. What's going on, everyone? I'm Charlie Batch, joined by my co-host, Mr. Hannibal Navy. What's going on, Charlie? Not much. We're here for another episode of Giving Legends Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Zoa Energy. And today, is Zoa Energy is powered by great taste, electrolytes, B and C vitamins, zero sugar and caffeine from green tea, and green coffee. It's available at Amazon and at a store near you, like 7-Eleven, Costco, and more. For more info, go to zoaenergy.com. That's Z-O-A energy.com. So as you can see behind me, a lot of activity going on here on Media Row. And of course, as we see people walking past, and we got to bring the big dogs out here. And speaking of a big dog that we big have, dog. one of the power agents big dog. in the game right now. He has a ton of clients that he represents throughout the National Football League among us, others as well. We're going to introduce to the stage, to the platform, Mr. Tory Dandy. How you doing, sir? How y'all doing, fellas? Appreciate y'all having oh, me on. Man, we, we we're trying to have you on, thing, man. man. Great, to have great, you great on. work y'all doing. Appreciate uh, it. Appreciate you, man. Absolutely. As you were kind of walking through here, man, of course, there's everything going on behind the scenes. For you, kind of different because maybe you get a chance to talk about you, but you also highlight your clients as well. Talk about the multiple roles that you play as you enter Media Row. Yeah, man, you know, Media Row is all about, you know, the presence and, and, and giving guys that platform to be able to speak about what they got going on as well. But not just marketing opportunity, but just in general, they foundations and stuff like that. And so for what you all are doing with, give it, you know, giving the legends, man, and, and Hannibal, we talk about it all the time. It, it's something that has not been done a lot, and uh, you all have done a tremendous job, man. So I, I'm glad to be here. Man, I'm glad, glad to have you on, man. You know, we've spoken in depth, especially about, what you do, and we'll get into what you do uh, in, in a second, man, because you've done some amazing stuff. You're doing some historic stuff, man, which I'm very proud of. But you have a plethora of NFL clients, man, and obviously we're on Giving Legends. Tell me your thoughts on how important it is for your clients to get involved in their community and give back. No, it's very important because you look at the backgrounds they come from, the, the demographics and all that. Uh, a lot of my guys does have uh, foundations and charitable causes. I also have my foundation, the Tory Dandy Foundation. I started about... 10 years ago, you know, giving back. And so I just try to lead my guys, my clients to say, listen, you need to go reach back home, wherever you plan at, wherever city you plan at, people looking up to you, you're a mentor, you know, you should take on that responsibility and give back. And you're leading by example, obviously. You got your foundation yes. doing what you do. So they, it's not just talk, right? Yes. It's not just, obviously when I came out, that was one of the things I talked to my agent about. My mom was pressing the agent, like, can you help them with, with foundation work and this and that? But it's not something that they really, you know, they'll tell you anything when they're recruiting yes. you, but you're, t you know, you're leading by example and actually doing it. Tell me, you know, obviously the, the giving back and helping your community is, is what we set out to do, but tell me your thoughts on how it impacts them from a brand and perspective and how teams look at them when they actually do stuff off the field in a positive way. No, it, it definitely highlight them and who they really are, what they're really about, you know, being unselfish, you know, and, and, and taking time out to spend that time. I tell guys all the time, it's not all about monetary. It's not all the time about going to an event or doing something to make money, but also to be able to be the inspiring voice. You know, people, you know, turn the TV on, spend money, you know, go to the games and see you all. So you got some people that are not fortunate enough to do that, but still is a fan of yours. So just being able to do that shows the ownership and also the organization that they, they got somebody there they can depend on long term as well in the community. Right, right. right. And I think a lot of that too, you know, you're all, you're a person, you know, hey, I'm not going to ask your clients to do something that you're not willing to yes. do, right? Yes. And ultimately, you see a lot of these clients at the emphasis stages of possibly starting a foundation, talking about maybe things that they want to do. How do you start that conversation? How do you kind of direct them the right way to figure out what their passion is just to get a start on them now trying to give back to their community? No, that, that's, that's, that's very important because uh, when I first started my foundation 10 years ago, I had no idea all the legality that went into that, you know? And so you see sometimes guys get caught up in a situation because things are not set up properly as well. And so my first thing of it is I let the guys know and they see, especially, you know, with social media now, recruiting guys and signing players, they already see that I'm out there, you know, giving back. But the first thing I do is challenge them to start the foundation, you know, but make sure they get it set up the right way. Right. That's why I'm glad people like you all and, and, and brothers like you all are doing what you all are doing and taking time out. One of my clients, A.J. Brown, is now a client of you all as well and using that platform. So anybody I get a chance to encounter for my clients, I'm trying to send them you all way, 
or at least somebody that does this at a very high level but making sure they got everything set up right. Speaking of AJ Brown, he's doing some great stuff and uh, he's obviously one of the athletes chair those clients, man, doing some great things, man. And, uh, you know, he he's committed to not only his thing is we try to get him. He wants to do so much, right? He, yes. you, got, you get somebody like him who wants to give everywhere he is. He yes. wants to give where he's from, where he went to school, and he wants to give in Philly, you know what I'm saying, which is commendable, man. And I love the fact that his, he's very eager to do those things, man. Did you did you know that about him when you guys went out and were looking at him in college and trying to get him on your squad in CAA? You know, coming out, A.J. was so kind of like, you know, from a Mississippi kind of sheltered in a sense, you know, personality, like kind of reserved. But as I got to know him, man, I, he, he'd get his shirt off his back. Um, he don't care about the spotlight like that. And so, yeah, I could definitely see it over time that this is something that he wanted to do and be on this kind of platform. And now being in a city like Philly where the bright lights are at, you know, and he's an all-pro, but also he's an all-pro human being off the field as well. And I think one of the, here's one of the things I want to touch upon because obviously when I came into the league in 1998, it was kind of, you know, you had your agent and it was a marketing team. Then it was a period of time. And this is why when I go back when I was with IMG before there was CAA, right? And you know, Tom Condon was there, Ken Kramer was there, and they were like, hey, we need to kind of shift the focus a little bit because the entertainment business is now starting to blend into what the athletic industry looked like kind of made sure they blend it, CAA was created, right? So now you have this new generation that's looking to blend it and all of those, and they talk about brands. But they don't necessarily have that brand at the embassy stages. How difficult is it to kind of talk to your players about, hey, let's do it the right way on building a brand, and then, hey, everything else will follow, just do the right thing? Sure, that's a great question, because really now with this NIL space that we're in, I mean, a lot of guys got un unrealistic expectations and not understanding that you have to build that brand first to make companies want, want to you know, be attached to you, be affiliated with you. And I tell guys, everything you post on social media, you know, wh wh who you're around, what are you doing, it's a spotlight. When y'all came out back in the days, you didn't have that you much have attention that. like that. You know, unless you hit the mainstream news. But now, with a click of a phone, everything is out there. So I tell guys all the time, it takes time organically and authentic building that brand now that people want to identify themselves with, attach themselves with. And here's the one thing as we talk about, because it was important for us to make sure, you know, transitional programs were in place, right? And people always talk about, hey, man, you need to network. You need to kind of go out there and do these type of thing. But everybody doesn't really know what networking looks like. Everybody's not a golfer and can spend five hours out there. Because quite frankly, son, if you're not a golfer, it's boring. Yes, <laughs> and yes, you guys don't yes, want to do yes. that. How are you kind of directing your clients to say, hey, you got to get out there on a Tuesday and, and do those things, get with your organization. Are those difficult conversations that you have with your clients or they are all receptive and wanting to do so those things? I think probably 85% of real, real receptive. You got some guys that just want to practice, go home, chill out. You know, and you got some guys that want to be out there, but they just don't know how to go do that. And I tell guys, get you get comfortable about being uncomfortable first and be around people that you see doing other stuff. You get in the locker room, you know it. See the vets. See the vets. Seek, seek out that information. She got that wisdom and God is how do they get to the point, you know, what, what they're doing now. So I tell guys all the time, like, get into that locker room. Of course, you got to keep the main thing, the main thing, learn that playbook, because that's what's going to pay the bills. But ultimately, when you start saying you want to build a brand, but also do stuff in the community, start looking at the ones, tag along. Okay, I, I come into the locker room, you're a vet, I'm latching on to you. I go donate and help out with your organization first to see how to do that. I think that's what guys have to do, and I don't have a problem at all have a conversation like that with my guys. You know, I have my own thoughts, and Charlie, had, we, we talk about this a lot, but I want to hear your perspective on the role philanthropy can play in transition, right? A guy when they're done, right? Because we try to encourage guys to do it, you know, just how you would start a business and everything else. Philanthropy is a business, right? But it's a business built around them and their causes. Tell me what you think a role of philanthropy and giving back to the community can play once they're done. Like, if they do it while they're playing, how can that help them in their transition? I think it helps tremendous because, first of all, people see it you know, really genuine who you really are with the, with, the, with the helmet off and really your personality, your true demeanor, your true character and what you're about. And, and it's just call it what it is. People want to be around good people, man. And, and you got people that, once you said transition life out of football, people in the power to be, you know, they, they got resources and network. You want to build a network along the way, not just when you all of a sudden about to retire. It's too, almost too late then because you got people like yourself, like y'all did it, y'all did it along the way. So I tell guys, you coming in, Learn what you need to learn on the playbook, but as you continue to grow and continue to, to expand, start reaching out, start seeking mentors, start going to, like I said, different events, different corporations, and, and, and putting your name out there and letting them know who you really are. 
And then when you start doing the charitable causes, all that's going to do is, is let people know, like, listen, you know what? I want to go to that event. So all of a sudden now, you A.J. Brown, but you got a, a certain CEO there seeing who you really are outside of just being all pro. So now A.J. Brown wants to do this five years from now outside of football. Now he's more receptive to probably help A.J. Brown out. I want to I want to spend some time and, you know, you know, we you in Oakland. We want to get some time to pop your collar a little bit, man. I, you know, I, I think you're doing some great things. I want to give the platform for me to talk about, you know, what's contributed to your success, man. You, you're kicking some butt, man, in, in this in this industry, in NFL, especially in NFL, and, and getting these young players on board and doing some great things with them, getting them great contracts, and you know, setting up legacy for them. And you're setting them up for the rest of their life, man, and getting these positions. What has contributed to your success and what you're doing through your through your process of becoming a power agent? Man, I, I, I wouldn't be here. I, I, first of all, I appreciate you, you, you saying that, you all saying that. But I got to give a big shout out uh, to, the, to the man up above, but also Eugene Parker. Eugene Parker was my mentor who gave me an opportunity to intern with him. We all know he, he was a legend in the right, industry. Yeah, West, rest in peace, Eugene. But I worked with Eugene for like 13 years. I see how to do it the right way, the organic way, high character, morals, and integrity. Eugene told me all the time, he was like, Tori, listen, every client is not for you. You know, you got to understand that. And, and I, I grew to understand that over time. And I just think, man, from the business side of it, knowing the nuances of the contracts, we, we seen the work Eugene done. I was able to be right there by his side and get some, a lot of the information. Then as I transitioned over to CA after Eugene passed, CA has, a, you know, the powers of the beat, the great Tom Cunnings of the world, the Jimmy Sexton's of the world, who I continue to work with and also learn from as well to maybe to the agent that I am today to be able to do what I'm doing for my guys. But also, man, for me, I just not, I'm not just a contract guy. I put on multiple hats for my guys. Sometimes it's a bro big brother figure, father figure. Sometimes it's a, a mentor, it's a counselor. It's, a, it's all kind of hats that I put on that, you know, that, that's what I signed up for. That's what I do. And that's, and that's genuine. And I think, you know, people look at agent world and some people try to jump into it because they think they can, you know, just jump in and relate to a player and get somebody to come on. And you obviously, you come from some of the places these players come from, but it's the thing that I like to dispel and want to hear your opinion on it. Yes, you're getting a lot of people because you're able to build relationships, you understand where they come from, you understand where they stand their family dynamics and different things like that. But you know you know the world, you're educated on what's going on. It goes far beyond, you know, don't minimize. I always tell people, like, don't minimize a person like yourself just because he can talk to the man and understand him and build that relationship. You know the space. You know how to negotiate contracts. You, you have respect of the executives in the NFL. Talk a little bit about, you know, I guess some challenges that you had and dispelling myths and things like that in this industry. Well, certainly, man. I, you know, I've been at this thing now um, about 21 years. Started as an intern coming out, South Carolina State. Got my MBA, played football at South Carolina State. Then got with Eugene Parker. And then at the time, it was, you know, dealing with the myth of having a black agent. You know, dealing with the aspect that I'm too young. You know, but once again, I never got impatient, like, a lot of times now, a lot of people reach out to me, want to be agents. They see it on social media. They see you at the draft and all this, but they don't understand all the, the no's goes, yes. that I had to get along the way to get the yeses that I'm getting now. But also, I was patient to wait my turn. I didn't want it. It wasn't that I wanted it overnight. Let Eugene Parker be the man. Let me learn from Eugene so that when the time comes for Tori to be able to go out here and fulfill my responsibility to my clients and their families, I'm able to do that. And I think just that piece of it, man, learning the business the right way and doing it the right way, I think ultimately got me where I'm at now and allowed me to be in the space that I'm in. But even now, now it's because I'm co-head of CAA, which is the number one sports and entertainment agency in the world, I'm too busy now or I'm too big time now. So now I got to go in the living room now. Instead of being just a black agent or a young agent, now I got too many clients or I'm too busy now. Now is so that. So now I got I to go attack that now. But I show up. I, I, as in the family, I tell them all the time, as any of my clients, whether they plan now or not, whether they went first round or seventh round or undrafted, ask them and their families, when Tory is needed to show up, is he showing up? And that's what I continue to do. And you are one of the top dogs in the industry right now. And schedule crazy, but you always make time for people, right? So for somebody that's listening right now, that's interested, following you on social media, saying, I want to be Tory, that's who I want to be. What would it take for that person to convince you that is worthy of an internship to come learn under you? Being persistent, I'll never forget, man. I met Eugene Parker, I, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. Coming from South Carolina, born and raised, limited resources, meaning no money. 
I found out Eugene Park was, was at a seminar in Tampa, Florida. I'm in South Carolina. I packed the bag, drove almost six, seven hours. This is you hear Eugene speak at a panel. During intermission, I walked up to him, told him, hey, Mr. Park, I'm Tory Dandy. I'm getting my MBA. He gave me his card. Spent about five minutes with me, gave me some Jews and wisdom. I walked away, inspired. I met the great Eugene Parker. Man, I, it took me six months to get Eugene attention, blowing him up, emailing and calling him, emailing and calling him. When I was about to throw the towel in on working with Eugene potentially, uh, he finally responded back. He said, hey, young man, I see you've been persistent. I see you've been eager. He said, these days and time, young people want stuff instantaneously. He said, where are you located at? I said, South Carolina. He said, I got to go come to Atlanta, Georgia. In like two weeks, how far are you away? I said, two and a half hours. I went and had lunch with Eugene, spent about two hours with him. He didn't offer me a position. He didn't talk to me about the business. He talked to me about life. He wanted to know who I was, what inspired me, what, inspired me, what motivated me. We stayed in contact a few more months. Then the opportunity, it came then. You know, so for me, it's more about what are you bringing to the table? What are you willing to do to be, you can't be selfish. You know, you can't be, you got to have that hunger and that desire. People ask me all the time, like, where does it come? I don't know. My mom worked two or three jobs raising me and my sisters on her own. So I had that burning desire to get out of my, my current situation that I was in growing up. But I don't know, like, it's the reason why y'all was in the NFL and so successful. Y'all had that dog and that hunger in you. Some people just can't put that in them. So for me, it's more so about how passionate are you about learning, how passionate are you about working versus being seen. Those are the things that I look for. Working instead of being seen. I love it. I love it. No doubt about it. Like you said, people want to instantly. They don't want to be, they're not patient and not willing to put the work in because they want the results now. So I applaud you on everything that you're doing, the hard work that you put in the business, and that's why you are at the top of your game. So we applaud you, brother, seriously. I appreciate it. And I want to say this to you all, man. You know, both of you all, in your own respect, had a great career, tremendous things. You could be off retirement just doing whatever, but you still giving back and, and being impactful, man. And that, that means a lot. It says a lot. And I try to tell all my guys, it's brothers like you that they need to look up to and seek out because y'all are doing it the right way. Appreciate we it appreciate team. it. You know appreciate we're here. It, we're willing to support and do everything we can in that particular manner. If people want to learn more information, get in contact, whatever you're doing business-wise off the field, how can people get in touch with you? Email Tori Dandy, T-O-R-Y dot Dandy at C-A dot com. Instagram, I'm T Dandy one uh, on Instagram. That's main two ways, Instagram and, and my email. That's it. There you have it, man, from one of the top dogs in the industry. Top man, he dog, is killing man. it in the game right now, man. Thank you for joining us on the show. Hey, and thank you for listening to another edition of the Giving a Legends podcast. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and comment on what inspires you to be a Giving Legend in your community.